there, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of Create Something Today. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to upcycle glass jars into beautiful works of art like this. And you know, I just used ordinary glass jars. Um, these are jars that probably had jam in it or spaghetti sauce or pickles. I cleaned out the jar and then using the PBO Vitrol glass paints really gave it a nice look so that I can reuse them. I like to use these jars for my paint supplies like paint brushes, markers, uh, things like that. And also I'm gonna show you how to use the PBO Vitrol crackling effect kit on glass. Uh, because when you apply this to the glass, you get a really nice crackled look and it's really very pretty and beautiful. So let's get started. We'll first take a look at the supplies that we're going to use. Now for this project, I am using the PBO Vitrol glass paints. Now what I love most about these glass paints is they're very transparent and they're easy to layer on one another and what I love the most is you can actually apply these paints so that you can let them run into each other and you don't have to really do a lot of work. You just let them run into each other and you get these really beautiful effects and I'm going to show you this uh, in this video but these paints are just one of my favorites to work with um, when glass painting. So you can buy these glass paints individually. They come individually. I usually buy my glass paints at Blick Art or on Amazon. I will have links to um, the supplies that I use in this video below. Uh, and just know none of the links are affiliate links. These are products that I actually use and I really love. And what I also love is this PBO work box. I actually got this from Blick Art, and uh, I really just love this uh, work box. It comes with 10 different colors, as you can see here. Um, you get a sponge that you can work with. You get a relief, gold relief outliner. It comes with a paint tray as well as a paintbrush. Now, I don't really use the paint tray. I did try to use it, as you can see, but I don't really use the paint tray. I just prefer to uh, use the paint directly from the paint jar. The only challenge with that is that you need to be careful not to contaminate the colors and really clean your brush very carefully before uh, dipping it into another color. And it does come with one brush, uh, which is a really good brush, but the reality is you're gonna need multiple brushes, not just one, and so you'll definitely need to purchase more. And I'm gonna talk more about uh, paint brushes next. But this is the PBO work box. I, I love the, the little plastic container it comes in. It's easy to store. It's got a cover on top of it. It also comes with a little uh, instruction booklet. Um, so if you are going to invest and you want to invest in um, more than just one paint jar at a time, I do recommend that you get the work box. It's, uh, it's a great set. Now you'll definitely want to have more than one paintbrush. And for this project that I'm going to show you, I actually used the flat paintbrush uh, and because that's what worked well for the kind of design I was doing. If you're doing a more detailed or intricate design, you definitely want to have some smaller brushes so that you can paint those um, detailed designs. But for this, the flat brushes work great. And I uh, recommend having at least three or four so that you'll have one brush for each color that you choose. And the PBO work box actually comes with a squirrel hair brush. So squirrel hair is definitely a great um, brush type to use, but you don't have to have squirrel hair. You are perfectly fine working with uh, just any kind of soft brush or an, a synthetic brush. Really what you wanna look for is you want the bristles to be soft, but not overly soft and definitely not too stiff either. So if it's a little bit springy, you know, and you can kind of, uh, you know, bend it, that's the kind of brush you want. And you can get these at 
just a local craft store. You don't have to invest a lot of money on paint brushes for this project. Um, something like a Michaels, or you can get them on Amazon, or even at Blick Art, you can just buy some basic craft brushes that are, again, soft, but um, not too soft. Those are the types of brushes that work best for glass paint. They're really great at picking up the color and applying it to the glass jar. Now the other product that I used for this project is the PBO Vitrol Crackling Effect Kit on Glass. I really love this product and this uh, effect. If you look really closely, you can see that there are some crackling lines on this glass jar that I painted and that's because of that crackling effect. It's very subtle, but it's just really beautiful. It gives such a really great look. And uh, it's a two-step process that you have to apply after you've applied the paint. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. But this is a great kit. So you can just see it will create sort of very subtle crackled lines in your, in your glass painted uh, project. Okay, so some other supplies that you will need for this project. Uh, well, first of all, I, I do recommend that you cover your table space with something. Um, I just use some poster boards, like an old poster board that I don't need anymore. I use that. You can use craft paper or any kind of table covering just to protect your table. And also when you put your, um, you know, your glass painted object down, it, if it stains the paper or the table covering, that's not a problem. Uh, I recommend that you you have maybe three or four small little containers for um, one for water, one for this pink soap, and one for the mineral spirit, which I'm going to just talk about in a minute. Um, you will need some rubbing alcohol just to make sure our glass jar is thoroughly clean. We'll use the rubbing alcohol for that. Definitely have paper towels with you, a rag. Uh, and you know i like to just use you can use a paint tray but i just use like these leftover i, I reuse like lids that i have from plastic containers like take out food and take out containers these are great for me to rest my brush like remember i said i use multiple brushes and i'll have one brush per color and when i'm not using that brush i just sort of rest it on here until i need to use it again so that when I'm cleaning my brushes, I'm only doing that at the end of my project and I don't necessarily have to be cleaning them in between. Uh, so I just try to keep my colors all separate like that. And let's just talk about um, the mineral spirit. So the one challenge with the glass paints is that you cannot clean them, the brush with the paint. You cannot clean it in water. It just, it's not going to work. It's not water, water soluble. So you really need to use a mineral spirit to clean your brush. And anytime, if you're using that same brush in another color, you definitely need to clean it very uh, thoroughly before dipping it in another color. So I recommend mineral spirit because it's odorless. You can use a turpentine but I, I don't like using turpentine because the smell is just too strong but the mineral spirit is odorless um, and you can see here I have put some in my container and when I was cleaning the brushes that's the color left over um, when I was cleaning the brushes and what I find though sometimes is the brush is still not a hundred percent clean just from that and so I have to clean it again and I what I use for that is this pink soap which is actually really great for cleaning brushes and all I'll do is I'll just squirt some of the pink soap in a container like this just a little bit directly add some water and then just let my brushes soak for a little while until all that paint residue and everything is removed so that's the only challenge with working with uh, glass paints as opposed to watercolor or acrylic where it's really easy to clean your brushes with glass paints it does take a little bit of time and um, I, that's why I try to keep my brushes separate in the with the different colors while I'm working on my project and then I only clean my brushes at the very end but if I do need to clean them in between between while I'm still working on my project, I just use the mineral spirit.
Now for this project, we are going to upcycle used glass jars and really give them a new life and uh, some new color like I've done here. And uh, for this glass jar, I can't remember what was in it originally. It might have been pickles, it might have been spaghetti sauce. I can't remember exactly, but I definitely like to collect glass jars and uh, and paint them and uh, really turn them into something unique and nice and fun. And so the first thing is you want to definitely clean out your glass jar, make it make sure it's totally clean. Uh, then soak it in some water so that the label will come off. Uh, sometimes that sticky residue is harder to remove and so I end up having to use an SOS pad. And if the stickiness is still not completely removed, you can then use a paper towel and like rubbing alcohol and sort of get rid of that residue. So you definitely want to make sure your glass jar or your glass bottle is really clean before you start painting. Remove any kind of labels and sticky residue that you may find and it should be like a really smooth clean surface before we start painting on it. For this project, we're going to paint in this layered style, sort of like ombre, it's ombre inspired. And so what I first want you to do is you're gonna pick three colors. I'm choosing this deep blue, uh, this green gold, and chartreuse. So those are my three colors. When you pick your three colors, you definitely want to have colors that have some contrast. So you don't want to have all dark colors or all light colors because you definitely want to show the degree of contrast. And what I recommend is when you're painting with a dark color, the next color that you should use is a lighter color and then followed by um, a darker color after that. And as you can see here, I have a darker color, a lighter color, I did the darker color again, and then I did the third lightest color here at the top. And that's the format that I'm going to follow for this glass jar as well. And I did the same here. It's a darker color, but um, it's like a darker color here. It's the lighter orange with the darker color, and then I used a brown over here. So we're gonna do something similar. Okay, so uh, like I said, I'm going to just paint directly from the paint jar and this is why you can see I've set up my uh, table space so that I have these three uh, lids. These are just from uh, takeout containers and just you know other plastic container lids that I have. So I'm not going to mix my brushes and double, double dip in a paint jar. So I don't want to clean my brushes till the end until I'm finished this project. So um, I have to just be careful that I don't contaminate any colors. So I'm going to start with um, this deep blue. I just want to shake it a little bit. And I'm going to just pick up some of the color. You want to you want to have your brush saturated, but not overly saturated. And I'm starting at the bottom. So I'm just going to apply this all the way around. And I'm going to do another band on top of that. And you can see it's not, I'm not trying to be 100% perfect because I want this to have like that handmade look. I want the colors to flow in together. Okay, so now I'm ready for my other color. Okay, so I'm gonna put my brush down here. I'm gonna be very careful not to double dip. Shake this a little bit. I'm gonna use the golden rod. And I'm just gonna make sure I apply right next to the other color. And this is where it's okay if it drips. It's okay if the color runs into one another. That's what I want. I want that effect. I want them to bleed so that it just automatically will start to blend on its own without me having to, to do the blending. So if I add a little extra and I see it dripping, that's okay. You can see that's already happening right here and that's the effect I'm going for. Okay, 
So now I'm actually going to add another layer of the deep blue on top. So you can see right here, it's already dripping in and that's really cool. That's the effect I want. So now I'm going to add this right here on top. Okay, and then now I'm ready for my last color, which is this chartreuse. And I'm going to do the same thing. And now I'm just at the neck of this bottle, so I'm going to make sure I just... So you can see for this bottle, I'm, I'm mostly using the deep blue and the, um, the lighter, the golden rod, and then just a hint of the green. It's not gonna be as much green at the top, or a chartreuse, really. Okay. So it is now done. So what we want to do is we want to let this dry. Uh, you should let it dry for a couple of hours, like maybe about two hours. Let it dry. And once it's uh, drier, it doesn't have to be 100% dry, but it should be dry enough, slightly sticky, and then we're going to apply that crackling effect onto this. Okay, and so you can see my colors are already running into each other, creating these cool patterns. Uh, and as it's drying, just let it do its thing. You don't have to play around with it or try to adjust the colors. Let, let it just do its thing. So let it dry for maybe two hours, and then we'll start to apply the crackling effect to our painted glass jar. Now, while your glass uh, jar is drying, so you're just going to leave it on the side, let it dry, and you might find that your hands have a little bit of, um, you know, paint on them, and it's a little sticky. So, you know, rubbing alcohol is pretty much your best friend during this time, so make sure you have the paper towel nearby, put some rubbing alcohol in the paper towel, and just walk, clean your hands that way. And another thing, um, you know, once you've finished painting, make sure you close those paint jars because the last thing you want is for it to accidentally spill on your floor or on your carpet. That would be a huge mess. You don't want that to happen. And your brushes. So now it's time to clean them. You don't want to leave them too long in the state that it's in right now because it will just, the brush will start to harden. And once it starts to harden, it's really, really hard to clean after that. And your brushes have um, a possibility of just getting damaged and you'll have to throw them out. So you don't want to do that. So you definitely want to use the mineral spirit. I'm going to pour some mineral spirit into another jar, but I can reuse this actually. This is mineral spirit. It's okay that it's already got, um, you know, the color in from the last time I was painting, but I can reuse it. But for our purposes right now, I'm just going to pour some of this mineral spirit in here and dip these brushes in right away so that I can start to get them clean. So I'll leave them soaking for a little while until it's clean. I'm going to test it on a paper towel to see if there's any paint residue. And if there's still residue on the brushes, if they're not perfectly clean in a couple of hours, then that's when I'm going to use that pink soap, which I've already poured into here. Um, the pink soap and just some water and then if once I dip this into here and le let it soak in here it will really clean that brush and it will get rid of all that residue so uh, it's a two-step process that's what I find that works best for me because sometimes this mineral spirit doesn't just do the trick of getting my brush as clean as I want it to be so I, I use both the mineral spirit and the the pink soap
Now you want to make sure that your painted glass jar is dry before we add the crackling effect. It should be dry, but just slightly sticky. So not completely dry, but uh, just sticky to the touch. And now we're going to add step one of the crackling medium. So you can just shake it, open it up, and we're going to use another flat brush for this. So you wanna just dip your brush into the crackle medium and just apply an even coat all the way around. Make sure you get all the areas of your jar Make sure you get the neck of the jar as well. And you can be pretty, you know, fairly generous with what, how much you apply on here. And once we add this step one of the crackle medium, after that, we're going to let it dry for 24 hours before we apply step two but you should see the crackle starting to form within 15 or 20 minutes. So it doesn't take that long for it to form. This medium like makes the, the crackles and then step two, when we add step two, that seals it, that just protects it and seals it. Okay, so I've added the crackle medium all the way around and now I'm going to leave this for 24 hours. And then after that, once it's completely dry, we'll add uh, step two of the crackle medium. And remember to clean this brush. Now this brush you can just probably clean with water. So just make sure you put it into your container that has water. Now the glass painted jar is completely dry and it is now ready to have the step two of the crackle effect added to it. Uh, if you look really closely, it's kind of hard to see in the video, but if you look closely, you can see some of the very fine crackle lines, like the crackle medium added, which is just really pretty. It's very, uh, it's a very nice antique kind of look to this. So we're now ready to add step two, which is um, this part of the crackle medium. And what this will do, we're just gonna add a coat, just like how we did before with the uh, step one of the crackle medium. The step two will actually seal and protect the crackles made. So that will be our next step. And then what we do is we let this dry completely before we add any uh, embellishment with the, with the gold outliner, which I'll show you afterwards. Okay, now that our uh, jar is completely dry, we can now add the PBO relief outliner in gold to embellish it. And what I like to do is just uh, keep it very random and follow along like where the paint drip lines are and just sort of create my own pattern with the um, relief outliner. So once you've added your outliner, you do need to let this dry completely before you can handle it or display it. So um, that would be the final step. And then of course next we need to focus on cleaning up. So just like this. I'm just going to be very randomly applying the gold outliner.
Now, it is really important to clean your brushes promptly soon after uh, painting. And I mentioned this earlier in um, the video. So you want to make sure you clean your brushes very well so that it's not stiff. Because once the paint dries and it becomes too stiff, it's really hard to, to clean them and you, you can't use them again. And you don't want to throw out good quality brushes. So remember to clean your brushes promptly. Um, you know, one thing to keep in mind, right, when you're using paint, vitrile paints you cannot just clean them in water it, it just doesn't remove the paint pigments and that's why you need to um, do this two-step cleaning process so I recommend you use a mineral spirit there are many brands of mineral spirits out there available so you can choose any one uh, I do like Gambasol and the main reason I just like mineral spirit overall is because it is odorless. You can use a turpentine, but uh, I just don't recommend that because I, it's just the odor. I don't like the smell. You really need to be in a very well ventilated space if you're using turpentine. If you're not, um, I would stay away from that and just use like a mineral spirit that doesn't have an odor. Uh, and what I would do is just pour some of this into a container and then soak your brushes in there in the in the mineral spirit for like maybe 10 15 minutes until the pigment is really removed um, you can also buy like mineral spirit in a smaller size like I have here this is a different brand it's a Winsor Newton and um, this is also really convenient the smaller size because then I can just dip my brush directly right in there and then clean it right in the um, in the jar in this bottle itself and so I don't have to worry about having another container and the thing about the mineral mineral spirit is um, you can see here it's clearly used but you can reuse mineral spirit many times so don't feel that just because it looks like it's used you can't use it anymore because over time this pigment does settle to the bottom and uh, it is reusable so you can actually use it for quite some time and what I do also if I did use the mineral spirit in here once I've cleaned my brushes here I will carefully pour it into here and just keep this smaller jar of it um, you know keep in mind that when eventually you do want to discard the mineral spirit you cannot spill it down the drain or just throw it in the garbage um, it's just not you know good for the environment it's considered hazardous you don't want to do that you should really find a space in your city in your community there's got to be a place where you can safely drop off these kinds of materials and I would just Google um, or maybe look into your local city council or mayor they there got to be a drop-off space where you can uh, drop off these kinds of materials that are considered um, you know a little more hazardous for the environment so make sure you do that definitely do not spill it down the drain and don't throw it in the garbage so keep that in mind and uh, what I like to do too is after I clean my brushes with the mineral spirit you know sometimes the bristles are still a little stiff like you want to make sure it's thoroughly clean and you can still you know uh, bend the bristles so if if it's not if it's like this one here is still a little stiff let's do this one here still a little stiff so I what I do recommend then is using this speedball pink soap I really like this product um, it's just a soap for brushes and again what I would do in a different container is just to squirt a little bit of this into a container fill it up with some water and then just soak the brushes in there for maybe you know 15 20 minutes let them clean thoroughly uh, and let it soften up like once it's dry so again once it's dry if it's not soft enough just do this process again with the pink soap. So again, just make sure you clean your brushes so that you can use them again and again. And um, and you know, you, it's a two-step process again for the uh, when you're working with the PVO vitrol paints. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Create Something Today and remember to subscribe so that you can be notified when my next episode is posted. And also, if you are in the New York City area, just know that I do host workshops in the Michaels Community Classroom on 6th Avenue. Just go to my website, divineny.com, click on the workshops page, and you'll know when my next workshop is going to be. So thanks so much for joining and I will see you again real soon.